Here are 11 YouTube settings you might not know about that could have a big impact on the success of your gaming videos. The first one is featured sections. So many small YouTubers make this mistake and it hurts their growth. Have you ever landed on the homepage of a large YouTube channel? Of course you have, dumb question. But when you land on that homepage, what do you find? A huge array of different videos to click on and watch. And not only does it feel like the channel is active, but this creator is providing themselves with a lot of opportunities to get views by serving you up a whole bunch of their videos that you could potentially click on. Now, a lot of smaller channels don't do this. When you go to their channel homepage, they have max one to two rows of videos. It gives off a sparse, small channel vibe, and you're limiting the of videos that could potentially be exposed to that viewer. To fix that, you have to add featured sections. The easiest way to fix that is to sign into your channel, go to customize channel, and this is where you can add those rows of videos. And here, down in featured sections, you can click on the add section button to add rows of videos, playlists, and rows of channels to your channel homepage. You can also add a channel trailer, which is the first video that will show up to people who are landing on your channel first time. And you can add a featured video for returning subscribers, which is the first video that will show up to viewers who have been exposed to your channel before. The next setting you'll want to change can actually double or even triple the amount of subscribers you can get from your videos. I'm not joking. Rob and vidIQ have actually run case studies on this. To optimize this setting, you can go to customize channel again, then to the branding tab. Then you want to scroll down to video watermark. You want to make sure you add a video watermark. Video watermark is the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your video that viewers will be able to click on and subscribe to your channel while they're actually watching the video. But an important setting many creators overlook is that you want to make sure entire video is selected here. And Clicking this option will make sure that that watermark stays on your video for its entire duration, which is a good thing because statistically speaking, it gives more opportunity that your viewer might notice that watermark, realize how desperate us YouTubers are for external validation, and then click on it and subscribe to the channel. Another thing many people miss is that you can actually add tags to your YouTube channel. To do this, you go down to settings, then go to channel, and in channel, you can add keywords just like you would add video tags. You wanna add keywords that are related to your channel name, but then also add keywords that are related to the type of content that you create. And theoretically, this makes it more likely that YouTube will be able to better categorize the content you produce on your channel and serve it to the right audiences. How much do channel keywords matter? I have no idea. Probably not very much. And that's coming from a guy who one of his most successful videos is about how to tag your videos. Don't judge me. It was a good video idea. The only problem is tags don't really work anymore. But adding keywords here isn't going to hurt anyone, so there's no harm in it. The next setting is a very niche one, but potentially very important one, depending on what type of videos you create. To find it, you wanna to go to settings, then you wanna to come to channel, go to advanced settings, then scroll down to automatic captions. YouTube automatically transcribes your videos and shows subtitles on them. And a surprising amount of people actually watch videos with subtitles on. However, numerous awkward spell checking mistakes have all taught us that AI doesn't get it right all of the time. So if you're a creator who doesn't swear in their videos, you wanna make sure you check this checkbox. What that's gonna do is stop YouTube using the word fuck in your subtitles when you actually said duck. Next, I wanna show you the general tab. Go to settings, then go to general, and in general, you'll see a whole lot of nothing. I wanted to show you this because I find it funny how an impressive sounding tab like general is basically completely empty, the more you know. The next setting is really important because technically it could mean the difference between you not getting fined and you getting a $30,000 fine from the FTC. We're gonna go settings, channel, then advanced settings. And in advanced settings, you need to set your copper compliance. If you make videos that are made for kids, as in the intended target audience for those videos is kids, then legally you need to make sure you have this set to yes. By doing that, you're gonna lose a bunch of features like monetization, comments, and basically all of the features that make YouTube actually good. But it might save you an uncomfortable conversation with the FTC. On the other hand, if your videos are never made for kids, you can check the no box. Or if your videos are sometimes made for kids and sometimes not, you can set it so that you can manually designate each video when you're uploading it. The next setting you really wanna adjust is in settings again, then uploading defaults, then advanced settings. And in advanced settings, you wanna turn off allow automatic chapters. With this on, YouTube is gonna try and automatically add chapters to your YouTube videos, which is a bad thing if you're an entertainment channel because you don't really need to categorize your content if you're an entertainment channel because categorizing your content into chapters just doesn't really make that much sense. And it's a bad thing if you're an education channel because well, YouTube's doing this automatically. And you know how much I trust YouTube's AI from a previous point. If you wanna add chapters, to see your videos, do it manually and uncheck this box. The next one is once again in settings, then you wanna to go to channel, advanced settings, and you wanna come down to the clips section. You wanna make sure this checkbox is selected. Basically, it's going to allow people to clip your content and share it. So yes, it does make it a lot easier for people to steal segments of your videos and share them, but yes, it's free promotion for you, so why wouldn't you want that? 
The next setting is in settings again, we're gonna go to uploading defaults and in uploading defaults, you're gonna find, well, your uploading defaults. These are like templates that videos you upload will be pre-populated with and they can save you some time having to manually write out your descriptions, fill out your social media links, add your tags and all that kind of thing. So they're useful, but something potentially even more useful is this visibility dropdown. You wanna set your default to be unlisted. The reason for this is twofold. One, you don't wanna accidentally publish a video to your channel without knowing. And two, especially if your videos are in higher quality, like 4K, you wanna let your videos sit for some time. It's safe to allow an hour or two to allow high definition to actually process and show up on YouTube. Otherwise, if you just publish it as soon as it's been uploaded, it's probably gonna show up in ugly standard definition and you're gonna get mean comments like these ones. The next setting, we're gonna to go to settings once again. Gonna go down to community, and then we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and you can add blocked words to your channel. This is helpful for one, automatically moderating certain hate comments or comments with strong profanity, if that's not your thing, from your channel. And it's also useful for getting rid of some of those sub for sub comments, because you can actually add blocked word phrases, which doesn't really make sense. I don't know why YouTube titled that, but you know, here we are. A little bit lower down, you can also block links. So anyone who's dropping a link in your comment section will automatically get flagged. And when a comment comes in that features one of these blocked words, it will automatically be flagged, removed from that video, and you'll be able to find them by going to your YouTube studio, to comments, and then to held for review comments. And should you dare enter this tab, you might find that some of the comments left actually aren't spam, and you can either click on these check marks to approve them or click on the trash bin to delete them. And last but not least, another setting you'll wanna turn on at a video level can be found by going to your videos, clicking into an individual video, then scrolling down into advanced settings until you see shorts sampling. Similar to allowing viewers to clip your content, this setting will allow viewers to create shorts from your content. My personal stance on this is you should always have this on. Sure, it means people will be able to use your content to create shorts and get views for themselves, but it's also free promotion for you. YouTube shorts are one of the easiest ways to get views. One of my students recently got over a million views on one of their shorts and he had less than 500 subscribers at the time. So if you wanna learn how to create viral shorts, click on the video on screen. In that one single video, I'm gonna walk you through absolutely everything you need to know about creating shorts that get tons of views.